friends, before we get started, fully started this morning, um, I'm going to read you a little bit about Holy Humor Sunday. This is what we are doing today. This is all of the fun that we are going to have today. Um, but I wanted to read you this little description. I know we've done Holy Humor before, but it's also been about five or six years since we've done it. So this is a little refresher. The idea of setting aside one Sunday each year to celebrate God's gift of laughter and joy has been a long and rich history in many congregations around the world. Laughter Sunday, also known as Holy Humor Sunday, Hilarity Sunday, God's Laughter Sunday, Bright Sunday, or Holy Fools Sunday, has its roots in a number of different Christian traditions. Churches in 15th century Bavaria used to celebrate the Sunday after Easter as Rhesus Pascalis, God's joke, or the Easter laugh. Priests would deliberately include amusing stories and jokes in their sermons in an attempt to make the faithful laugh. After the service, people would gather together to play practical jokes on one another and tell funny stories. It, is, it was their way of celebrating the resurrection of Christ, the supreme joke God played on death by raising Jesus from the dead. The observance of Rhesus Pascalis was officially outlawed by Pope Clement X in the 17th century. Perhaps people were having too much fun. In the Orthodox tradition, people would gather on Easter Monday to tell jokes and funny stories and to dance and eat together. Other celebrations include Letere Sunday, also known as Mothering Sunday, on the fourth Sunday in Lent. Letere means rejoice and comes from the opening collect for that day. Rejoice with joy, you that have been in sorrow. On this Sunday, the usual lint and purple vestments and altar cloths were replaced by rose-colored ones instead, sort of like that Sunday that we celebrate during Advent. Flowers, not normally present during Lent, are also brought into the sanctuary. Now, in 1988, the Fellowship of Merry Christians, didn't know that was a thing, did you? The Fellowship of Merry Christians began encouraging churches to resurrect some of these Christian traditions, to celebrate the grace and mercy of God through the gift of joy and laughter. Paul Thigpen has described this Sunday in this way. It was once customary for even the most dry and solemn preachers, which you all clearly have, to begin the Easter homily with a joke. Easter Monday especially was hailed as God's laughter day, a token of the Christian scorn for the devil who had pretended to win the victory over us through death. Easter, of course, provoked that the, pro, excuse me, proved that the joke was on him instead. In the words of the Irish poet Patrick Cavanaugh, the resurrection of Jesus was truly a laugh freed forever and ever. That laughter has ever since echoed down the centuries. First, I think we must recognize that humor is distinctively and universally human. The sense of humor, after all, is part of God's gift of reason. Laughter is so much a part of who we are as human beings that to lose the sense of humor is, an injur is as injurious as to lose one's self, more physical senses, sight or hearing or touch or taste or smell. Christian author G.K. Chesterton once wrote, angels can fly because they take themselves lightly. Never forget that the devil fell by force of gravity. He who has the faith has the fun. So that is the point of today to celebrate that immense radical joy of an empty tomb with all of the laughter that we can muster. We're gonna do things really differently this morning. You will notice that in your bulletin, everything has a number next to it. The only ones that don't have numbers next to them, um, if you get down to the responding to God's word, the affirmation of holy humor, the pastoral prayer, and the Lord's prayer, all have numbers next to them because they didn't fit. So I have a random number generator on my phone. So instead of going in order, decently <laughs> and in order this morning, we are going to go with whatever number the phone pops up with, and we will jump around as it wills. So, we begin with our opening hymn. Number 155, Raise a Song of Gladness. And we're gonna sing through this three times this morning.
friends, we will actually continue with number four. Look at us going in order this morning. I will invite you to rise in body or spirit, and we can join in the prayer that is in your bulletin. O oh, great laughing God, we come into your presence with joy and longing to be surprised. We thank you that you have given us the gifts of laughter and delight. These things give hints as to the nature of your purpose for us and for all the earth. You know better than we do, amused God, what important people we believe ourselves to be. Believing that we have to be serious all the time, we miss out on the joy of your creation. Forgive us, heart of joy, and make us open to the startling and upside-down ways in which you work. Fill us with Easter's laughter. Fill us with your healing joy. Fill us with the love poured into us through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. May we find that in giving up to laughter, there is healing and hope and abundance and blessing. Tickle our souls with the brush of your spirit to renew our worship and our living. Take a few moments for personal reflection and confession. In the joy-filled name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. We are going to skip down to number 12, so I'm going to invite you all to sit, and I need help with this part. So what happens when you marry a pastor, y'all, you get roped into things you don't want to do. <laughs> so we've done this before, but it's been a while. We are going to do uh, an interactive scripture reading. So I'm going to read our scripture this morning, and as I read it, Peter is going to hold up signs so that you can react to what I'm reading. So whatever he holds up, that is your instruction. Most of it is for everybody. There is one where half the room says one thing and the other half says the other. I will direct you in that. So our reading is from Acts chapter 12, verses 1 through 17. About that time, King Herod... Ooh began to harass some who belonged to the church. He had James, John's brother, killed with a sword. Oh. Well done. When Herod saw that this pleased the Jews, he arrested Peter John. John. <laughs> as well. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. Herod put Peter in prison, handing him over to four squads of soldiers, 16 in all, who guarded him. He planned to charge him publicly after the Passover. While Peter was held in prison, the church offered earnest prayers to God for him. The night before Herod was going to bring Peter's case forward, Peter was asleep between two soldiers and bound with two chains with soldiers guarding the prison entrance. Suddenly, an angel from the Lord Hallelujah. appeared and a light shone in the prison cell. After nudging Peter on his side to awaken him, the angel raised him up and said, Quick, get up! The chains fell from his wrists. The angel continued, Get dressed, put on your sandals. Peter did as he was told. The angel said, Put on your coat and follow me. I will follow him, follow him wherever he may go. <laughs> Following the angel, Peter left the prison. However, he didn't realize the angel had actually done all this. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself. After leaving the prison, they proceeded the length of one street when abruptly the angel was gone. After that, Peter came to his senses and remarked, now I'm certain that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from Herod and from everything the Jewish people expected. Realizing this, he made his way to Mary's house. Mary was John's mother. He was also known as Mark. 
Many believers had gathered there and were praying. Now this is the split side one. When Peter knocked at the outer gate, this side, <laughs> a female servant named Rhoda went to answer. <laughs> she was so overcome with joy when she recognized Peter's voice that she didn't open the gate. <laughs> Instead, she ran back in and announced that Peter was standing at the gate. You've lost your mind, they responded. She stuck by her story with such determination that they began to say it must be his guardian angel. Meanwhile, Peter remained outside, knocking at the outer gate. They finally opened the gate and saw him there, and they were astounded. <laughs> he gestured with his hand to quiet them down. Then recounted how the Lord led him out of prison. He said, tell this to James and the brothers and sisters, and then he left for another place. Bye. Amen. <laughs> Well done, all. <laughs> all right, friends, we are going to move on to item number 17, which is the Lord's Prayer. So let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And we will back up one to number 16. So let us pray again. Please pray with me. Holy One, on this day when our worship is not as it normally is, help us to find joy in the chaos, in the irregularity, in the laughter and the unexpected. We thank you for all of the ways that you show up in the world around us, that you open our eyes and our hearts to see you in and through others, to the ways that you shock and amaze us, that you bring joy and laughter to our days and our hearts and our souls. We pray that as we go out into the world that you would continue to show us your love and your grace and your mercy in the people and the world around us. This morning, God, we pray for all those who are as far from joy as they feel they could be. We pray for those who are ill. We pray for those who are grieving. We pray for those whose lives are not safe, whether that is in their countries, in their communities, or even in their homes. We pray for those whose lives are insecure in some way, whether that is food insecure, or housing insecure, or income insecure or healthcare insecure. God, for all of those who are in need in our world, we pray that you would work in and through us as people and as your church, that we may do your good and be your love in the places where it is needed most. God, we also pray for those who are celebrating today all of the different things that get celebrated for birthdays and anniversaries, for new experiences, new relationships, new jobs, new homes, new possibilities. Help us to see you in those new things in our world, in those celebrations. Help us to proclaim your word and your love in the midst of our own joy. God, we lift up all of these things and all of those things that we name only in the quiet parts of our hearts, and we give them to you in joy and in love, and in Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends, turn to your back page, 
We're going to do number 22. We're going to end our service. <laughs> However, you may notice that our Claiming Our Faith Identity reading is also written backwards this week. So, that means that you get to start it. Or we'll all start it together. Now our service can begin. This service has ended. To do and be God's extravagant love in the world. And now as the church, God calls us out. Because God binds us together in sacred companionship and blessed connectedness, we are the church. We are called to share God's word. We are called to show God's love. We are called to serve God's world. We are called to strive for God's peace with spirits reaffirmed and renewed. We claim new strength, new purpose, and new hope in our call suffused with God's grace. God has embraced us yet again, and our spirits have been made new. Here in this worship, through prayer, word, and fellowship, God's beloved children, today, tomorrow, and always, we are the church. That actually works pretty well backwards, too, doesn't it? I was going to say, yes. I know. Maybe we'll make that a thing. <laughs> All right, now you're going to flip to the front. And we're going to do number two, which is our glimpses of God. This is our newest practice of calling each other into worship, reminding each other why we worship, by sharing the experiences that we have of God in our lives outside these walls. So is there anybody that wants to uh, share some way that they have seen God? It could be in the last week. It could be the last month. It could be one of those pivotal moments in your life. Does anybody want to share something this morning? Okay, so not to be depressing, but unfortunately my head dog passed away uh, on Monday last week. And, um, but where I saw God in that was um, when I was driving up to the cities. I had to go to the cities because there was, um, this head dog was considered an exotic pet. You have to go to like an exotic pet place or whatever. So when I was driving into the cities, of course, you know, I'm a hot mess, you know, crying and everything like that. And um, and I'm holding it too. And I'm just glad that I was able to get there safely. It almost felt like like the cars were getting out of my way mm -hmm. and like, you know, everyone just almost like understood like, okay, get out of the safe way. I don't need driving crazy, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> not like normal, but um not okay. I I have to get to that. So <laughs> But you know, and then like even just the, the, the caring staff at the at the um, hospital up there, the vet, they were really compassionate and you know they they made me feel very comforted when I was going through that tough time. And yeah, I'm very thankful for them and their, their compassion and patience and kindness and you know they're willing to work with animals and save them and help them and even help them pass peacefully too instead of suffering. So that's where I saw God. And I think I would venture to say that you got to be a presence of God for your lovely little creature yeah. in that care and compassion, too. Anybody else want to share something this morning? There's nothing special, but it is special. <laughs> well, friends, these are the ways that we see God in the world around us. I love that we take this time to remind each other, you know, it's easy for us to see God here. At least I hope it is. That's my prayer as I put worship together every Sunday, that we see God here. But sometimes it's a lot harder to find God um, out in the world, uh, especially 
nowadays, I think. And so it is my hope that not only will other people's stories inspire you and feed your spirit, but also that they will help you to uh, maybe see God outside these walls in the weeks and months ahead. So we are going to actually move on to another sharing portion. Um, we're gonna move on to number 11, which is our joke break this morning. So if you have a church appropriate joke, oops, I forgot to flip that, uh, that you would like to share, I am gonna invite you to come up here. Oh, I see somebody coming, are you coming? Oh, good. <laughs> Here, come up here, Megan. Or that works too. Come here, Megan. Come here, Megan. So people can hear. Yeah. Oh, you're matching. That's so I am. Cool. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I just wonder about you. It's just 
smiling and I started laughing and I just wanted to rock with you and I, I've done that before <laughs> in church. That's and all that's right. <laughs> there you go, my intervention. <laughs> Anybody else? What is a Christian's favorite social media platform? Facebook. Uh, <laughs> very nice. <laughs> list that I just had to share with you all. <clears throat> this is things you never hear in church. Wait, I should flip this. Okay. Hey, it's my turn to sit in the front pew. <laughs> Present company excluded. <laughs> I was so enthralled, I never noticed your sermon went over time 25 minutes. <laughs> Personally, I find witnessing much more enjoyable than golf. <laughs> I mean, that one had to go in there. Come on. <laughs> I've decided to give our church the $500 a month I used to send to TV evangelists. Ooh. I didn't make this list. Okay? I volunteer to be the permanent teacher for the middle school Sunday school class. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I love it when we sing hymns I've never heard before. Okay, I could have put that one in. <laughs> I have heard that one. <laughs> Since we're all here, let's start the worship service early. Pastor, we'd like to send you to this Bible seminar in the Bahamas. Just saying. And the last one, nothing inspires me and strengthens my commitment like our annual stewardship campaign. <laughs> Guess what? Pastors don't like writing those either, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> All right, let me wake my phone back up here, folks. Where do we go next? To number eight, which is a prayer to open our minds and hearts. So with the laughter on our lips and in our bellies, let us pray. Holy One, your word is all around us, in us and through us. However we encounter it, however we hear it, however we get to enact it in this world, we pray that you would be a part of it, that you would speak in us and through us, that you would open our minds and our hearts to hear that word. Because God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts here in this place and all around the world be acceptable in your sight, for you are indeed our rock and our redeemer. Amen. All right.
night. We move on to number 13, which is our exploring the word together question today. It is a very serious question this morning. I invite you to either contemplate on your own or discuss with one another what the most useless word is. Take some time. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, well, I guess it does say most useless, which indicates one, but feel free to branch out from there. So many feathers. They are molting. They're everywhere. You'll be back. Is what works for that. Oh, it's true. <laughs> nice try, though. <laughs> Somebody's just sore about the golf joke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll see what everybody says today. All right, friends, I don't normally do it this way, but just for, just for the joy and the fun and the laughter of it, what did people come up with today? What's the most useless word? What, Ian, what's the most useless word? Useless. <laughs> useless. Good one. I like it. Whatever. Whatever? Depends on how it's used, right? What's the most useless word? What, Luke? Boring. Boring. Yeah, that's, that's not a word we get to use in our house, is it? <laughs> Boring is a useless word. We got one. Okay. So um, she asked me, what are some medical words that like are super long? So I was like, I don't know. All I can think of is gastroesophageal and dectomy or something like that. <laughs> and then I was like, what does that mean? He goes, mm -mm. and I said, so why not just say throat goodbye? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I mean, why not simplify? <laughs> because medical and simplify don't go together. <laughs> Others. Try. Try. Ooh. Okay. Thing. Thing. Whatever. Yeah. 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 Right. I like that. Can't. Can't. Right. I feel like we have teachers in the in the. <laughs> that too. That too. All right, folks. Well, as we come back together, we're going to jump all the way up to number one, which is our centering prayer. So in the midst of all of our silliness, let's take a moment to remind ourselves why we're here to immerse ourselves in God. Our centering prayer is immerse me in joy, God of laughter. So we'll take just a moment. Kind of like taking a moment. It's fun 
It's a little chaotic. It's silly. But to take a moment in the middle of that to remind ourselves that we are here to enjoy the joy of God is a blessed thing. We're going to move ahead to number 15. This is your insert, uh, the affirmation of holy humor. So please join me. We believe with the Bible that there is a time to weep and a time to laugh. We believe with John Chrysostom that laughter has been implanted in our souls. We believe with Martin Luther that you have as much laughter as you have faith. We believe with John Calvin that we are nowhere forbidden to laugh. We believe with Francis de Salle that humor is a foundation for reconciliation. We believe with Soren Kierkegaard that humor is intrinsic to Christianity. We believe with G.K. Chesterton that a good joke is the closest thing we have to divine revelation. We believe with Dietrich Bonhoeffer that ultimate seriousness is not without a dose of humor. We believe with Flannery O'Connor that Christianity is a strangely cheery religion. We believe with Elton Trueblood, never trust a theologian without a sense of humor. And we believe with Charles Schultz that humor is proof that everything is going to be all right with God nevertheless. I like ending with Charles Schultz here, right? All right, our next one is number 14, which is our hymn, hymn number 591, Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Um, we're going to sing only the refrain part, and we're going to sing it through three times. jump to number nine, which is our other scripture reading this morning. This is from Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise God in his fortress, the sky. Praise God in his mighty acts. Praise God as suits his incredible greatness. Praise God with the blast of the ram's horn. Praise God with lute and lyre. Praise God with drum and dance. Praise God with strings and pipe. Praise God with loud cymbals. Praise God with clashing cymbals. Let every living thing praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right, we're going to jump to number 19 which is our prayer to uh, bless our offering in all of the different ways that it comes to us and all of the different ways that it gets used. So friends, let us pray this morning. Holy One, we thank you for the gifts that you give us in our life, and we thank you for this chance to share those gifts through the work of this church, through the work of our hands and our hearts, we pray that you would bless these gifts for your love and your grace 
your mercy and your justice in our community, in our country, and across our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Next one is number seven. These are, it, this is set to not repeat, I promise. So we're not going to repeat any of the ones. Okay, so this is our song of peace, and this is where you need your kazoo this morning. Instead of singing the words while Rocky plays, you are invited to kazoo the words along. Now, reminder in how kazoos are used, you hum through it, you don't blow through it. If you blow through it, nothing is going to come out. If you hum, it will buzz. So we are going to kazoo along to let there be peace on earth. And Rocky is multi-talented because she is playing and kazooing. <laughs> announcements our announcements this morning there are only a couple of them I'm going to invite Cindy to come up and do our session report first so that she and I don't duplicate anything so Cindy if you want to use the lectern that would work quite well there we go Oh, you'll be fine. Okay. Um, all right, so we met last Wednesday. Um, uh, financials for last month, we were in the red, $104. Year to date, we are in the red, um, $6,330. Um, we continued um, discussion on the steeple repair, get the sh shutters in the chimney. Sign more of that to come. Some of them were just kind of waiting for a date, um, actually, for the steeple repair and the shutters and etc. Uh, we're looking at possibly doing solar panels. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking at um, AED device, so we're going to check out the pricing. So we should probably have an AED device on hand in the future. We're aging. Um, we're going to X-ray on the packs of Q's as we can. Yes, we will make a more valiant and concerted effort at that next year, and I yes. won't forget, I promise. We'll, we'll start early, the last week of when it was. Yes. <laughs> um, July 2nd work, um, workshop. Um, pull, we're going to take a little poll on if we should have um, church worship on the 2nd. Right. It's on a Tuesday, but. So a couple of years ago, when July 4th was on a Sunday, there were four of us in church, including myself and Katha. So the following year, when July 3rd was on a Sunday, we decided to cancel worship. And so July 2nd, we feel like it's sort of on the cusp. 
Um, so we thought maybe taking a straw poll, like if you, does anybody know they're gonna be gone 4th of July weekend? Okay, okay, so we're probably, so we'll have worship then. I mean, we love you all and we will miss you, but. <laughs> we just wanted to make sure that it didn't turn into another one of those Sundays where nobody was here. We've got time enough to work on it too, to find out more people are gonna be gone. Right. But just from people that are here now, that's a, that's a pretty significant number. So we'll stick with worship on July 2nd and go from there. Thank you, Cindy. Uh, <laughs> yes, more? continue. Thank you. Um, cleaning day. Yes. We are looking at uh, May 7th, depending on um, weather. Um, we'll do an adult And the, the rain out day is particularly for the cleanup that has to happen outside. We definitely have some cleaning that has to happen inside. Um, we'd particularly like to tackle the deacon's closet and the fireside room downstairs. Both of those need some serious cleaning out. Those can happen on May 7th, no matter what, but all of the cleanup that needs to happen outside, if we get rained out on the 7th, we will keep our fingers crossed for the 21st. Yes. So it's this month or in May, there's five Wednesdays? But in the word the fourth. We are the fourth. So okay. okay. We couldn't remember if we were fourth or last. Yeah. No, Which good. usually doesn't make a difference, but this year does. It's twenty fourth. Okay. Alright. Okay, so we will take care of the Dorothy Day dinner on May twenty fourth. Um, I have been texting with Jen about that as well. Um, so we will get more information about that, but that will be May 24th. Thank you, Janice. Yeah. And then our next session meeting will be May 10th. Yep. Thank you, Cindy. And the only other thing that I have to add is that I will be on vacation from tomorrow through April 30th. Um, Reverend John Curtis, who was um, until recently the pastor over at Plainview Community Presbyterian Church and is now the stated clerk of the presbytery, he will be with you next week. Um, and then Carol Schaefer will be with you on April 30th. Um, I'll be around, so if there's a, an emergency or something, let me know. I just won't be here. All right, um, we are gonna jump oops, to number 10, which is a reading um, from this book, Still Laughing, Still Learning, Still Looking for a Good Title, Mostly True Stories of Family, Friends, Faith, and Foibles. This was written by Bill Chadwick. Bill Chadwick is an uh, honorably retired pastor in our presbytery. He was um, an interim for a while. He was the interim at my parents' church when I was about three years old, um, and then spent the um, majority of the rest of his career at uh, Oak Grove Presbyterian Church in Bloomington. Bill, now that he's retired, does stand-up comedy at various venues, um, mostly churches. So maybe we'll get Bill to come down here. Um, but this is sort of a memoir of sorts that he wrote a couple of years ago, and I wanted to read this one to you this morning. This chapter is called Holy Fools. Holy Fools, we called ourselves, knowing we were at least half right. Our group was made up of a gaggle of junior and senior high kids from our church, an adult advisor or two, and I, the associate pastor. Once a month, we donned clown makeup and costumes as, and visited local children's hospitals and homes for the elderly. This was before Stephen King made clowns scary. <laughs> An ancient Christian tradition used this, uses the clown as a symbol for Jesus, for he was the one who shattered all expectations concerning propriety and power. <laughs> Jesus was God's fool. The symbol fell out of favor for a few centuries. During that time, the church concentrated on being dull, dour, and dreary operating on the deep fear that somewhere, someone might be enjoying herself. I don't know why Bill uses herself. But by the 1970s, things had loosened up a bit. In fact, more than a bit. Sanctuaries everywhere were stuffed to bursting with guitars and balloons in the church's frantic pursuit of 
relevance. Following the lead of some creative folks, we formed a clowning troupe. With their parents' help, the teens made their own costumes, sewing outrageous creations, and rummaging through their father's wardrobe for goofy ties and crazy shoes, which were not hard to find in the 1970s. <laughs> I've done this too, so. <laughs> the kids designed their own clown faces, starting with a white background and adding designs in blue, red, or green. We learned that clown law requires that each clown face anywhere it appears in the world be unique. There's something powerful in that idea. It reflects our belief that God loves and cares for each individual on the planet, numbers the hairs on our heads, as Jesus put it. There's something magical about clown makeup, and not just for the audience. Kids who normally tremble if required to simply hand out Sunday bulletins at the sanctuary entrance could, when dressed in silly suits and big red rubber noses, calmly talk and hold hands with patients three years old or 103. An adolescent anxieties about acne, popularity, and self-image were rendered temporarily impotent by the persona of a clown. As clowns, the kids didn't have to act cool. They were unbound from their teenage insecurities and freed for service, a bit like the women and men whom Jesus made whole. Sometimes our clown troupe led worship services in our own church, but mostly we climbed aboard Big Blue, the church bus, and made house calls. There's something about a whole bus full of clowns, including the driver. Big Blue never failed to elicit surprised smiles and eager waves everywhere we went. A simple cruise around the block was in itself a ministry to an often dreary world. When we led worship, we did so in mime, but when we visited nursing homes or hospitals, we always talked with people and especially listened to people. We didn't really have a lot else we could do, a few magic tricks, a couple of songs, but mostly we didn't attempt to put on a show. We practiced what is often called the ministry of presence, simply being there with people who might not have a lot of attention being paid to them. In the Gospels, Jesus performed some flashy miracles, driving demons into pigs, multiplying the loaves and fishes, giving sight to the blind, but some of the time, he simply hangs out. Gives Luke, Luke gives us no details about the conversation Jesus had when he went to lunch at the tax collector Zacchaeus' house. But I'm guessing that when somebody was one-on-one -on -one with Jesus, Jesus wasn't primarily teaching. He was listening. As Lloyd John Ogilvie has noted, the subject of the conversation between Z Jesus and Zacchaeus was probably Zacchaeus. And the tax collector came away transformed. At any rate, we clowns simply tried to carry on this idea, incarnating a little bit of God's love and care in the flesh. As one might expect, very ill children lying morosely in hospital beds suddenly squealed with delight when a clown peeked around the door. And the sparkle would return to the eyes of weary nursing home residents when in the presence of a dozen holy fools. One Saturday morning, a dozen of us clowns traipsed into Maple Manor Health Care Center we did our usual two-minute group show at the beginning, then split up and began visiting with the elderly residents. I was in my red and white striped puffy-sleeved costume, purple patent leather shoes, cardinal red wig and makeup. I pulled up a chair at a round table where two elderly men were seated, having their mid-morning coffee. I turned to the man on my left. He had a full head of hair, still mostly dark and cut short, gray eyes set in a pleasantly weathered face, and a blue and brown plaid shirt. Good morning, I began brightly. His lips stretched slightly into the hint of a smile. He nodded, almost imperceptibly. You from around here, I asked. He paused. His tongue wet his upper lip. He took a breath and let it out. Wisconsin, he enunciated quietly, with a tilt of his head toward the east. Do you have family? My wife died. I'm sorry. He shrugged. His tongue worked all around his lips, and then he wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. We never had kids, he said. My niece looks after me. Uh-huh, I nodded. What kind of work did you do? Farming, dairy cows mostly. My dad was a dairy farmer, I said. He smiled, his gray eyes twinkling. Pretty normal stuff, similar to scores of conversations I'd had in nursing homes. 
However, during the exchange, I had become aware that the man on my right was listening with extreme interest. He was leaning forward, wide-eyed, mouth slightly open, focused like a hunting dog on point. Finally, he couldn't stand it any longer. Nodding toward the man across the table, he said to me, in seven years, I've never once heard that guy speak a word. It was my turn to be rendered silent. Seven years. For a moment, I had to bow my head, and I looked down at my silly purple shoes. Whatever had kept this man behind a wall of self-imposed silence, grief, loneliness, illness, the wall had suddenly melted. Not through the ministrations of a therapist or a physician or a pastor, but simply being in the presence of a clown, a holy fool. Joy in the most unexpected places. <coughs> Friends, I'm going to write, invite you to rise in body or spirit for God's promise of grace this morning. Friends, the saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance. Good thing it's Holy Humor Morning. <laughs> that God is doing a new, beautiful, joyful thing in us and through us each and every day. In Jesus Christ, we are indeed forgiven. Hallelujah and amen. And friends, I will invite you to share the peace of Christ with one another this morning. And I'm putting on the red nose for this part, because I can't. But I can't talk with it on, so I can't use it as a mic. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
I've got the joy, joy, joy. Um, and we're going to sing verses 1 through 3. We're going to skip verse 4. And we're going to go back to verse 1. So we're going to sing 1, 2, 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 1. Kazoos or no kazoos? No kazoos. Well, I mean, if you really want to pull out your kazoo, feel free to do that. <laughs> this morning. Go with joy. Go with the joy of a God who created you. Go with the joy of a Savior who came for you. Go with the joy of a Holy Spirit who continues to move you. Alleluia and amen. <laughs> 